Okay, basically this is an iron plate cell that I'm testing out here. I've been doing some reading about the way they used to make cells in the old days and they would use iron plates. These were zinc plated. I got them from Lowe's. And um, I sanded them down. I don't think I got all the zinc off because I got some secondary reactions going here. You can see the bubbles there and the, the mess. This water started out really rusty in the beginning. But... Um, it's not running like that now. The water's running pretty clear. Basically, this is the diode right here. I didn't have a good cooling heat sink, so I just built one out of this piece of copper. I was going to dump some water in there if that thing starts getting really hot. And uh, this is the bubbler slash gas washer. And this thing is working out really great. It basically cleans almost all the NA out of there. Because the flame's almost completely blue, that little thing you see in there is a baffle, basically, just to keep the foam and splash from getting into my line. Same thing up in there is a little black baffle. So, I'm going to fire this up full power for now. Let's see what we got. Dims the lights. Okay, that's at about 970 watts. We got the flow pump off right now. This thing runs so good that it doesn't even need a flow pump. You see that muck there from the zinc reaction. Haven't done a liter per minute test on this thing yet. But it's doing pretty good. This right there is a thermometer that has a thermal couple connected to the plates themselves right here. Just to kind of give me a reading. And I got another thermal couple right here. That's connected to this radiator that totally sucks. I'm going to have to tear this off. You can see this thing is just running really well with no flow pump. I have a flow pump here. I haven't fired it up. I mean, I have, but not in this ex particular experiment. I'm going to fire that up. It's on now. Now up to about, uh, well, it hasn't moved too much. This temperature here is the radiator temperature. Pump causes a lot of foam, so and it doesn't even really increase the amperage like it used to in my other cells. This flow system is so good that it doesn't even need it. You can see that these things are just flowing like crazy. This foaming will go down in a second actually. Now one of the reasons why I wanted to use iron plates is for the simple fact that stainless steel is a horrible conductor and it acts like a heater. I'm not into running HHO for efficiency purposes at all, but any of you people who are who are trying to build an efficient cell, I'm putting out a lot less heat. This thing is still only at 77 Fahrenheit on the thermal couple, and I'm running about 775 watts through this thing. So I'm not getting very much heat at all. This thing can do a lot more than this. I'm going to dump some more electrolyte here in a minute. But um, it was basically full power. If you turn the pump on, the amperage goes up a little bit. I'm at 921 watts. That's with the flow pump on. Okay, I had to shut it down a second because that foam was almost getting up to my baffle. That baffle has a drain at the bottom of that cup. So basically with this type of flow system, the only good the pump does is flush all the crud out of the system. You do kind of need it for that. 
is I have to drain the cell when I'm not using it. It's not good to store this type of homemade stuff with the electrolyte in it. I'm going to reverse the polarity after a while, but as you can see, I don't know if you can see in there or not, these plates aren't rusting. And I've been running this cell quite a bit. I mean, yeah, they're going to rust, but... If you can see any of that or not. Let's kind of see inside of there. I'm going to fire it up real quick. Whoa. Apparently this thing is not grounded or something. All I did was touch this to that. Hope that didn't just fry my diode. Damn it. 